7.52 p.m., March 31st, 2002, a magnitude 6.8 earthquake rocks northern Taiwan. The entire island is brought to its knees. And in Taipei, only 135 kilometers from the quake epicenter, over 100 houses are destroyed, and at least five buildings collapse. The quake wreaks havoc on the construction site of 101. Two purpose-built cranes topple 240 meters to the ground. Five workers are killed and dozens more injured. A taxi driver fleeing his vehicle is crushed. Taipei is a disaster zone. All work on the building stops as aftershocks continue to strike, insurance disputes rage, and engineers and surveyors check the massive building for hidden structural damage. It was a big challenge for me at the time. The 911 attack had happened in the USA just before. And so our people and our investors began to question whether we needed such a tall building in Taipei. The work ban continues, not just for days or weeks, but for three months. An earthquake, the very force 101 has been designed and built to survive, now threatens to destroy the building's future. Not physically, but financially. Morale plummets, and a dark cloud hangs over the project. Finally, in July 2002, the building surveyors give 101 a clean bill of health. The internal framework is intact, and once more, work can resume. But the victory is bittersweet. No scientific test could have proven so effectively that 101's mega frame can resist a severe earthquake. But no scientific test would have come at so great a cost. The notorious March 2002 earthquake has put 101's mega frame under the most extreme test imaginable. But as work resumes and the skyline of Taipei is increasingly dominated by 101, a geologist from a prestigious local university discovers a worrying combination of data. Although only one severe earthquake has struck Taipei since work on 101 began, there has also been an unusually high number of smaller ones. Taipei 101 might not just be the victim of recent quakes, it might be the cause. When the second fair earthquake occur again almost in the same location then I take it very serious to, to, to do some research work. The fact that Taipei is a seismic hotspot and that 101 is built only 200 meters from a dormant fault line is common knowledge. But the powers of the earth are often hidden and despite the combined effort of geological scientists the world over accurately predicting when and where an earthquake will strike is beyond us. Dr. Lin believes the enormous weight of 101 may have reawakened Taipei's dormant fault lines, increasing the threat of earthquakes, not just to the building itself, but to the entire city. Although Dr. Lin cautiously states that this theory is not yet scientifically proven, the circumstantial evidence seems compelling. Bigger earthquakes, and more often, since the construction of Taipei 101 began, but foundation engineer Dunstan Chen explains why he believes this hypothesis is fatally flawed. That's actually the, at the beginning for every high-rise building I, I built in Taiwan, we consider the weight you put that the, the, the weight of the structure okay, should be more or less equivalent to the soil you excavated. The net change in pressure on the earth as a result of 101 is nil. 700,000 tons of construction has gone up, but 700,000 tons of earth was dug out to build it. 
The unpredictability of seismic activity means that either way, we may never know for sure. And regardless of what causes the frequent earthquakes in Taipei, this man-made marvel is being built to withstand them. Although concrete is one of the oldest and most widely used construction materials, it's incredibly heavy and, like a liquid time bomb, has to be pumped into position before it sets. These two factors pose a major challenge for construction workers on 101. The concrete they use here doesn't just have to get from the plant to the building, it has to get up the building as well. Once you leave the Beijing plant, within two or three hours, you have to arrive on site and start pulling. To do this, engineers develop concrete with specific levels of viscosity or runniness and specific drying times. This buys them valuable time and helps the powerful concrete pumps to work more efficiently. The result is yet another world record for 101. Concrete is pumped from ground level to 450 meters. That's higher than any other concrete pour in history. Construction reaches the 92nd floor in July 2003. Although nearing completion, the technological crown jewel of 101 is yet to be put in place. The tuned mass damper, the crucial windproofing mechanism designed to counteract the horizontal sway of 101's massive bulk. Although mass dampers have been used in skyscrapers before, they've never been this shape, they've never been this big, and at 380 meters, they've never been this high up. To be effective, the damper needs to be one-tenth of one percent of Taipei 101's total mass, a staggering 660 tons. Not even the awesome Taipei 101 cranes can lift something this huge and heavy. The ball arrives in prefabricated sections, which are then welded together on site. It's then hung from 16 10 centimeter thick cables and tuned to make it swing in exactly the opposite direction to the building. When the building moved by the wind, it would go against it and balance it out real quickly, very much like the uh, shock absorber of a car. And uh, I think uh, this idea has not been used in any other building that I know. So I think we're the first one to try that. In principle, it works like a simple counterbalance. But in reality, things are a little more complicated and a lot more clever. To stop the damper from rocking either excessively or out of sync with the building, the ball is attached to a series of hydraulic dash pots, like mega shock absorbers, that stifle the ball's movement. If the damper experiences a particularly sudden jolt, such as an earthquake, the hydraulic resistance in the dash pots is strong enough to create a lockdown effect. Meaning that the big golden ball in the sky will stay exactly where it is.